All right, homies. Space Marine 2 has been out officially for about a week now. I've been playing it for close to three, and I'm not getting bored yet. I have every class in the game level to 25 besides Assault, who's sitting at 22 right now, have a bunch of Relic tier weapons, completed everything on Ruthless multiple times, and been pleasantly surprised with how much fun Eternal War is, even if it is bare bones. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, that OG Xbox Live feel is really special, calls back some serious nostalgia for me, having a blast with that. The honeymoon stage has not ended for me up to this point anyway, because the game is simply awesome. It's just really fun, but it is obviously far from perfect and there are a bunch of quality of life and balance changes that need to occur before we focus on future content like weapon skins and new classes moving forward. This video will mostly be focused around operations mode and PVP because that will be the continued lifeblood of the game after you've beaten the main story and where most of the content that comes in the future will go too. That is not to say campaign does not need changes, I just don't have much to say about it right now because I haven't played it much yet, been focused on ops and eternal war so far, but of course I would love to see some narrative content with Titus or a standalone story expansion with another chapter and characters in the future as well. Give us some blood angels, give us some dark angels, give us some other goodies, it doesn't have to be Titus but I have no issues with Ultramarines or Titus either. And obviously these are the problems as I see them. You may not agree with all of them or my solutions to them and that is perfectly fine. Feel free to let me know down below if there's something I missed or if you have a different perspective on certain topics. Let's get the main annoyances out of the way first. Server issues are a big one. These have reared their ugly head in a myriad of different ways. Queuing in operations as host will often mean that no one ever joins you which is kind of difficult to believe when the player base has been consistently over 100,000 players on Steam alone and Xbox and PlayStation combined more than doubling that. So it is extremely unlikely that no one is queuing operations when you are. They're just not being put into your game sometimes, which is a problem because the bots kind of suck. Not always. I've seen Heavy Bot put some work in on Zone Throws when he's shooting the right one that doesn't have a force field, but that's a big if and a real player is generally going to be better, obviously. The bots could use some work. I've heard about some nightmare sections in campaign that are clearly designed with co-op in mind with having a real player next to you and that AI squad members simply cannot handle very well. So playing an entire ruthless run by yourself on a new game doesn't feel very good. It's a multiplayer game mode. People need to be able to queue into your matches. Kind of goes without saying, joining in progress stuck on the first 5% then getting looped forever on a black screen until you get kicked from your squad. Super common, super annoying, needs to get patched out for both Eternal War and PvE because it has quite literally prevented me and my friends from playing multiplayer together on numerous occasions. I have not personally had many disconnects thus far, only a handful and hundreds of runs, but many others have reported it, so whether that's on them and their ISPs or on the devs or some combination of the two, which is probably what it is, that needs to get sorted. Performance is kind of disappointing. My computer is no longer top of the line at this point, but I have a 3080 and an i9-9900KF, and I cannot keep a steady 60fps on high settings. Meanwhile, I'm running Hunt Showdown at 90 to 110fps, Gears of War at 100+, a lot of high fidelity games that don't run anywhere near this substandard. It is a great looking game, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I'm dropping sub 60 and nothing's happening on screen. I'm just looking at the background. And that feels wrong with the kind of computer that I currently have. It's basically console performance if I'm at 45 FPS during hordes. My computer is better than a console. For some basic quality of life and fun stuff before we get into the meat of the video on balance topics, I am not entirely sure class conflict should be a thing in this game, right? I can see arguments for and against it, and I understand why picking Heavy or Assault locks it out so your teammates can't also pick it, but I feel like you should be able to run three Heavies, three Assaults, three Tac Marines if you want to, just that buffs, debuffs, and perks of the same type should not stack together, so at least we can get rid of some of the ridiculousness if people decided to run three of the same kind together. So for instance, you wouldn't be able to Auspex the Swarm Lord at the end of Decapitation and just obliterate it while it has 500% extra damage from three different auspexes all going off simultaneously. You also couldn't stack three inner fires, so you would get instant grappling hooks constantly throughout the course of a mission. 
There would almost certainly still be very OP combinations, but here's the thing. That's already true. Three TAC Marines would still be really strong by staggering their aspects as appropriately, but I'm not sure it'd be hard to code something that prevented stacking them all simultaneously. And if we look at some of the current setups that people are running, they're already egregiously good. So it is what it is. I think people should be able to play what they want when they want. Three TAC Marines is kind of the standard squad for a Primaris group anyway. And so maybe with a few balance changes here and there, I feel like it's workable. Even more importantly though, the server should never queue you into a game where the class you're playing is already taken, right? If you're going to prevent people from playing the same class, don't put them in a game that forces them to change or instantly get booted. That feels awful for pubs. On a lighter note, I would love to see some thematic, lore-friendly emotes in the game as well. We don't need Fortnite dancing, I want them to be true to what Primaris and Space Marines are all about, but sweaty forearm grasping, sign of the Aquila and the Emperor, for the Emperor and Holy Terra voice lines and double executions when you and a partner both initiate on a Carnifex or Ravener at the same time would be incredibly dope. Imagine double teaming a Carnifex and both of you doing a synced execution together to take down one of those big targets. I think that'd be amazing. We already have the bones for some of that with specific character callouts, but they're pretty generic right now. And I'd like to see that system get expanded a bit more, especially when we get chapter cosmetic DLCs for like the Dark Angels, the Blood Angels, and so on. Knights of Caliban, to me, that sort of thing. I wanna hear specific callouts depending on which chapter I'm playing. You should obviously be able to delete custom armor sets. Right now you cannot, you make it and it's set there for life. Obviously you can change it, but you can't just outright delete it to make room for something new. Don't like that at all. And we really need true loadouts that save your perk tree, outfit, everything together all in one. Because the loadouts that are in the game right now are only for your weapons and the heraldry and armor loadouts are split into two separate things on top of that so it gets needlessly confusing you're juggling a lot on many different pages that could all use some work to streamline that situation a bit more chaos customization should also come to pvp absolutely unlocks armor sets and the ability to make black legion vanguards or night lords tack marines that sort of thing I do understand that will take some time and some doing, but I think it needs to be the end game for PvP. Give us something to unlock on the Chaos side as well. You're gonna be playing it half the time. But let's get into the core balance stuff now. Number one, I think everyone can agree, Zongor shields are busted right now and need to not be made out of adamantium, vibranium, and unobtainium, whatever combination that allows them to just reflect whatever damage is sent their way. They are absurd. It is absurd to watch a fully charged Last Fusil or Thunder Hammer Strike from a Primaris Marine essentially be ignored by a tiny little demon bird. A burb demon that is literally my Norris. No way in hell a fodder unit that numerous should be able to tank those kind of hits from someone as powerful as a Primaris Marine. And it feels even worse when there are like 10 of them all together and your mighty cleaving power fists and hammers aren't killing anything. They are trash enemies they are minoris, they are not elite by any stretch of the imagination. Why in Zinch's name are they so tanky? Now, when it comes to overall game balance and feel for our Primaris Space Marines, it's obviously going to be a difficult thing to get perfect, striking that ideal space between lore accuracy and great gameplay across four separate difficulties is no easy task at all. Overall, I'd say they've done a fairly solid job, otherwise I wouldn't still be playing, but you'll have wildly different power levels between a white level one weapon and a relic tier gold weapon or a level one character and a level 25 character who's fully kitted out, right? Damage values, stagger values, a lot of hidden or at least unexplained and unexplored mechanics change drastically as you progress and everything's gonna vary wildly depending on the weapon and difficulty and perk setup you have. So understand people are gonna have different opinions here and that is fine. Some are new players, some are going to be veterans only a couple weeks in. Low level opinions are still very valid because everyone is going to be low level at some point and you shouldn't need to be maxed out or have your thunder hammer be top level to do what it's supposed to do. Flip side of that obviously though, is that if you haven't fully leveled a class yet, your perspective may not yet be fully informed until you unlock those important keystones and achieve those relic tier weapons. With that said, Space Marine 2 kind of has Dark Tide Syndrome with its weaponry right now. 
in that even on minimal difficulty, there are certain guns and melee tools that just don't feel good to use initially, and that changes wildly as you progress. And it gives players the completely wrong impression on the viability of those classes, which we saw already in early access when some YouTubers were complaining that Sniper was awful and should just be deleted from the game. Again, when I used Bolt Sniper Rifle for the first time, I had similar thoughts. I couldn't kill warriors. It was like half my reserve ammo and headshots to kill one elite on minimum difficulty when there's usually like 30 before you get to the next ammo refill. I also was like, what is wrong with Sniper? What is going on here? This is hilariously bad. What is the point? I just had the wisdom not to share that publicly until I had, you know, like actually leveled up and played more than a couple of matches, at which point I then understood, oh, completely different vibe with some perks and upgraded weapons. Now I'm starting to feel like an actual character. But still, those early impressions do matter. And if they turn someone off from the game before they can experience the true joy of a class or a gun, that is a clear problem that needs fixing. And so I'm not entirely sure the balance and feel of weaponry is there on a level one minimum difficulty run because you still want your thunder hammer to stagger elites and bully enemies and feel awesome to use and it currently doesn't always at lower levels same with plasma where fully charged shots can take two three four shots in the face to stagger a single warrior and it may not even be dead by that point slamming a warrior over and over again with a thunder hammer and it not dying feels really bad when you're a level character but that changes at higher levels, even on Ruthless, and that is when you really come into your own. Is it worth it? Is it a good thing that it takes a while to get to that point? Eh, probably not. Now, I wanna be very cautious here because I do not wanna make this game too easy. And I think some of the complaints in the community currently are very much skill issue. Because with a competent team only a week in, Ruthless can already feel very easy. Not always. Important caveat there, it is not always easy, especially not with randoms. The AI director can absolutely screw you with massive waves and extremist spawns and a card effects or a neuro throw thrown on top. And of course, healing and resources are often exceedingly rare. More on that in a moment. But yeah, Ruthless is not always a simple thing. It is not always easy, but a lot of the time it can be if y'all know what you're doing, even without bulwark banner cheesing. With that said, I do think there are certain elements of the core gameplay loop that need buffs. We do not want to go down the Helldivers route where we are constantly nerfing everything that's fun in the game. Nerfs are important in any online game. I've always been a proponent of them. Don't get me wrong. You cannot simply buff things without power creeping everything and ruining intended aspects of design. Nerf is not a dirty word. They are important, but buffs are more important right now to make the Primaris look, act, and dominate like Primaris, and then afterwards, we can see where we are and tailor the appropriate elements to make sure challenge remains. The challenge is going to be a thing. And remember, lethal difficulty is coming as well. We don't know where that will be. We don't know exactly how that will shake out, but there's a good chance it's gonna make things hard again. So we'll see how that goes. Challenge is important. Being put in stressful situations that cannot be easily breezed through is important. Skill expression and the ability to fight through adverse conditions or survive on that magic 1 HP pixel through sheer skill and will is what makes games like this worth coming back to and what makes them replayable. But all that needs to happen with characters that don't feel like squish balls with a functioning health economy and weapons that hit the way they are supposed to in the source material. That feel is incredibly important and a lot of weapons currently do not, at least initially, and some never really get there at all. Bolt weapons in particular should probably hit harder than they currently do. Warriors should feel a bit less spongy than they currently do, and ambient enemies and hordes should go up in number. Obviously, performance is a potential issue there, but I think the key is to populate the map with more enemies, but not all at the same time. The game doesn't need more enemies on screen, past whatever the current apex is during a double massive wave. You'll get those a lot on Ruthless Difficulty, but it could toss a bunch more ambient enemies into the mix in those sections where there's currently a lot of downtime in between those sections, where you move forward and there's only maybe a handful of dudes and there's long gaps between hordes. Make those numbers shorter, make the ambient enemies more numerous, make it so warriors are a bit more common, make them less tanky and buff bolter damage so that I don't have to unload entire mags into their head 
or fully charge four plasma shots just to kill one of them. Again, some of this is mitigated, even on Ruthless, once you're level 25 with Relic weapons, and balancing around Relic makes sense to an extent, balancing around Ruthless makes sense to an extent, but early levels need to be fun too. And there's nothing fun about unloading two or three mags of mass reactive shells into a single warrior's eyeballs just to watch him shrug it off. On zero difficulties, should Tyranid warriors be able to face tank multiple mags of bolter fire to the cranium? They are a strong enemy, do not get me wrong, and in fact on tabletop I believe they're even more powerful on a per model basis than space marines, if I remember correctly, but mass reactive jet propelled shells can and do frequently rip through space marine armor and kill other space marines or chaos space marines and tear up the dude inside. Warriors ain't surviving that kind of deluge. So in my opinion, maybe add Tyranid Warrior Primes as the kind of squad leader of a group of warriors on the map with some upgraded weaponry that are as tanky as the ones we currently have, give them maybe slightly different coloration or special elements on their head to distinguish them, but nerf the toughness of the current ones by a bit while making them more numerous. And by extension, shooting at point blank range should not be a thing for enemies, for Thousand Suns or Tyranids. The Fletchet Green Shard Shotgun Warriors, the Devourers, should not continue shooting while you are meleeing them in the face, while you have a chainsaw revved up and carving through their eyes. Nor should Scarab Occult Terminators be able to unleash full racks of missiles from three inches away when they're getting smacked by goddamn Thunderhammer, right? I'm not kidding, I'll be behind a Termi smashing him with a Power Fist and he'll be locked in his rocket animation looking the other way as they instantly let loose and the rockets make a 180 degree turn then blast me mid melee combo with my fist up his ass. Makes zero sense. Looks terrible, feels terrible, should not work that way at all. And it feels super cheap with the Devourers on Ruthless as well because you'll be mid melee combo trying to stagger the warriors there and there will be six of those bastards all circle strafing you at point blank range and melting you. But for some reason, even though it's a shotgun that almost instantly kills you from point blank, it can also be fired from like 100 meters away, track you perfectly on the run or mid roll, and chunk you from across the map like a mortar over cover. They're pretty dumb. They need some tweaks. Now, to return to the topic of bolters for a sec, there are certain bolt weapons like the bolt rifle with underslung grenade launcher that are currently awesome. But part of that is due to the fact that you get nine grenades to start, and then all of them back anytime you execute a Majora's enemy with that last row perk. That is probably not going to stay. Infinite grenades, super fun, definitely OP, probably unintentional, probably going to get patched out. But yeah, while the general look and feel of bolters is not bad, and they can jib and explode enemies and do some pretty cool stuff, sometimes it just takes too long to get to that point, and it's a weapon type that is quintessential Space Marine. I mean, 60% of the weapons in the game are bolt of some variety. They need to be awesome. And at the moment, they're perfectly viable, not terrible weapons when leveled up. Even on Ruthless, they can be quite good, but they aren't nearly as satisfying or good as they should be. They shouldn't feel like solid. They should feel great. And again, that's only when they've been leveled up. At early levels, a lot of them don't. I don't think a Melta nerf is a pressing thing at the moment. They can trivialize certain combat scenarios to an extent because they hoard clear mixed hordes so incredibly efficiently and they don't take much skill. You don't really have to aim them, but they do have some downsides, right? Not great or reliable at killing bosses or shooters and they don't have any range. And again, we want to avoid hell diver situations right now in this first major patch, especially with all the drama going down on that side where fun things get dumpstered and bad stuff doesn't get anything good going for it at all. Never fun when in an early patch, they're just like, oh, this is too good, nerf this, this is too good, nerf that. And then you're just like, well, what about the things that are bad? Are you gonna buff those and they just don't do anything about it? That feels awful. What does need to get fixed about Meltas though, is the Melta overheal bug, which is sustaining life bars in a completely unintended way. And you can see it in my very first Hellbrute Zinch video from a week and a half ago. That healing is unintended. It makes you way too survivable. It is not how contested health is supposed to work. It needs to get fixed, clearly unintended. But on that same note, another major balance change to heavily consider right now is how the current health system works. And I think this has been a core complaint from a lot of players that resources are too few and far between 
that our armor and HP gets chunked super easily by even low level nids, and that the War of Attrition is too punishing and unbecoming of Primaris Space Marines, that we're forced to kind of play cowardly when really we should be able to run into combat, do a lot of shooting, do a lot of meleeing, and feel like a boss. That in many situations, with the current lack of passive health regen, it's better just to die before a major engagement and wait for respawn than it is to progress as a living, breathing squad. Especially because your teammate will just respawn at a drop down even if they have a full two minutes left on their timer. Because you can't go backwards, you just end up respawning no matter how much time was left. Trying to clear mortal wounds with three health packs is a lot of the time just a massive waste of resources and you're better served just committing ritual Sudoku. And it's true, Medicaid stims are very rare on Ruthless anyway. There may only be five or six a run, if that. Chip damage from Gaunts and Zongors can occasionally feel very oppressive, and the Space Marine 1 mechanic of healing off executions has been almost entirely abandoned in Space Marine 2, which can make the health economy feel wonky and out of balance. So what do we do about that, if anything? Well, number one, I think we need more ways to passively sustain ourselves while med packs would be a burst heal option during a fight. Whether that be very slow health regen as you progress to a level, whether that be healing off the guaranteed drop pods in the same way that Bulwark currently does, or whether that be healing percentages off executions based on which targets you just assassinated, every class should have ways to heal outside of med packs. For example, executing a Carnifex could grant 20% of your life back, while executing a Warrior could grant 3%, and executing a Gaunt would grant nothing. Again, I don't want to make this game too easy, because the challenge is where the replayability is, so other changes would need to come alongside those health changes, but I think some changes might need to happen. And the big reason is that healing the full from Bulwark Banner's Invigorating Icon, the level 23 perk for Bulwark, is super dumb right now. Whatever combination of perks he has that allows him to toss a banner down next to an ally as they're executing a warrior and then instantly heal them to full is game-breakingly stupid, in my opinion. But it's no surprise people are crushing on it when maps, particularly on higher difficulties, are so devoid of resources, right? Running that setup, especially with Inner Fire from Vanguard, the 10% uh, ult cooldown for everyone when something gets executed, is absolutely crazy. It means... Just insane uptime on your ults. Every 50 seconds, there's a potential 3-man, 0 to 100 heal. No matter how much HP they're missing, they're going to be topped off. For a Swordmaster class, it's not even an Apothecary. It's not even a Medic. Apothecary's heals themselves will not be that good when he finally comes around. And he's a class literally designed to heal people. A Bulwark is not. So yeah, moving away from mechanic abusing like that, but giving Primaris Marines of all shapes and sizes their own ways to get some health back by playing well, I think that would go a long way in making the health economy feel better and reward people for doing stuff like executions. Obviously, there's already a reward for it. You get armor, and that's nice, but if I execute a Lictor, I don't think a 3% or 5% heal off that is a bad thing for the game. Again, it would just need to come with some other changes so it didn't become too easy. The most important thing with a change like that one is that it has to be a logical, well thought out value for each of the enemies that you execute. Because if we're not careful, we could make the game too simple and that's not what I want to see. Which also leads into the gun strike discussion. There's been a lot of talk on this topic as well. I had said in my survival guide that gun strikes grant iframes and that is not fully true, but I don't believe it's entirely wrong either. I have played a lot of Ruthless now and while it is true you can take damage from certain sources and animations while gun striking, I do believe there is still some elements of damage resistance or invuln against multiple sources of incoming damage while you are doing so. If you were to just run into a horde, straight up, doing nothing else on Ruthless, you would die incredibly fast. Zongors, Warriors, Hormagons, gonna munch that booty, get through your armor, your HP will drop super fast, you'll probably be alive about 5 seconds. If that. But if you were to run into the same exact horde and gun strike something, you would definitely lose some armor, maybe even all your armor, but you don't just explode. You probably aren't going to lose an insane amount of health. In my experience, I almost never lose big chunks of health while gun striking. Now, I have gun striked in the middle of a horde many times and never been chunked unless 
it was an unblockable heavy from a warrior or extremist target that started their animation before the gun strike or if it was an aura move like a leap. So I think there's still something that massively increases your survivability while gun striking, even if it's not granting full immunity. Because without that, when you gun strike in a horde, you would literally just die every time if you had no damage resistance or invulnerability whatsoever. It is absolutely true that blue aura leaping grapple attacks from Minoris enemies and aura attacks from Majoris and extremist enemies can knock you out of the gun strike animation and deal damage. But as an anecdotal observation, I have seen six or seven Zongors all at once attempt to attack me while I was gun striking. And even though they were on my nuts, in my face, sort of clearly hit me, they did not deal any damage at all. So I'm wary of giving gun strikes full immunity like a lot of the community seems to want. Number one, because you don't have to do a gun strike if it's a bad time to do it anyway. If you think you might get chunked or lose all your armor instantly, don't. And number two, because if they made the iframes or damage resist or whatever the hell it is even more powerful and granted complete and total full immunity, then running attack into gun strike or shield bash into gun strike would become even more ridiculous and OP than it already is. And I can tell you, having played at least 100 hours of operations on three and four difficulty over the last three weeks, gun strikes are already really good. They can keep you alive in some insane situations. So again, that's all still anecdotal. I don't have a confirmation one way or the other, but from what I've played, and it is a lot, I have noticed that there's some kind of invulnerability or some kind of damage resist that helps you while gun striking. Otherwise, I feel like you would just instantly die anytime you did it in a horde, and that is not what happens to me at all. If someone has a better explanation for it, please let me know in the comment section. I'd love to read it. With that said, if you believe armor isn't nearly as powerful as it should be right now, that is a different conversation entirely, and I can see the argument there for sure. The idea that a single Gaunt or Zongor scratch is enough to strip away an entire bar of armor doesn't necessarily jive with the power we expect from Gravis or Phobos armor on a Primaris Marine. I will totally buy that. Maybe there should be some changes there. I'm just not sure Gunstrikes themselves need crazy buffs. Which takes us to Assaults. I think the unanimous worst class according to the community and also to some talented players that have been playing Early Access for more than a month. I think if most people are on the same page, Assault, at least in PvE, is amongst the worst, if not the worst of the bunch. Let me be clear, Assault is not a terrible class by any stretch of the imagination, okay? And his kit really does start feeling a lot better as you get into purple and gold relic tier and you get some of those perks going on your weapons and on your perk tree. When your damage and stagger go up, much like they do in Dark Tide, your ability to control a fight to cancel enemy melee animations and cleave and quickly eliminate targets becomes much more impactful and you're gonna start having a lot more fun. That true experience of being a jump pack Smith Marine starts to materialize. With that said, Thunder Hammer, which honestly feels great at higher levels, I've really started to like it recently, felt goddamn awful to start with. You couldn't stagger anything. Gaunts would take multiple swings to kill. You would just stand there smashing a warrior for like 45 seconds straight and not kill it. It is rough to level initially. And that's just the start of it. Simple fact of the matter is, this class still seems like a pale imitation of its campaign and PvP counterparts. Assault needs full jump pack functionality in Operations PvE. I don't think I've ever seen a game where in PvE that functionality gets stripped away, but in PvP we're normally balanced and making sure that everyone's kind of on an even, even playing field is retained. It's almost like completely backwards on that front. My guess is they stripped it down in terms of verticality, how high you can get up the jump pack to prevent players from escaping out of bounds or backtracking at drop downs in operations mode. And maybe they just didn't have the time or resources to go through each of those huge operations maps, adding invisible walls to all those areas. That's my best guess. But maybe they can add a timer where if the drop down is triggered by your squad as the team progresses and someone finds a way out of the main playing area by jumping backwards, if they don't re-enter within 10 seconds or whatever, they just die. Something like that to prevent people from being weirdos with a jump back and going backwards might be good and might fix that situation without them having to go in and put walls everywhere. But it seems a poor reason to just completely neuter the class to give them less charges 
two in PvE, three in PvP, which is so weird, and way less height on your jumps. Like in operations mode, a lot of your jumps are maybe 10 feet off the ground. You are barely above the warrior's heads. Whereas in Eternal War, you're rocketing like 50 feet into the air. Already, it feels way better to be playing that in PvP than PvE, which is so strange. It isn't fun to be floating ahead above your enemies. It is fun to feel like an avenging meteor crashing in from a skyscraper above. I would also like to see Assault get some damage resist and knock back during charged heavies. Especially with a Thunder Hammer, you are incredibly vulnerable when you are charging up and being chunked by a horde every time you try to do a power slam is not what you want. It's not a good gameplay loop. So damage resist or smaller shockwaves that stagger enemies to give you that space you need would be very welcome and would dramatically benefit the gameplay loop for assaults overall. And by extension, jump pack perfect dodges to activate your perks is kind of a dumb mechanic. You should not have to waste one of your precious jump charges just for the chance to maybe get a perfect dodge out of it and activate whatever side effect of your perk is. All those perks should just work on regular perfect dodges because the A button or the X button or your movement button, the one that just normally dodges for you is what you're gonna be using most of the time. That is your class ability. You get a 50% bigger window on perfect dodges. Why would you use your jump charges, which are very precious and you only have two of them. Why would you use those to perfect dodge when you can just regular perfect dodge, right? It doesn't make any sense. And on top of that, you should get three charges, not two. And the ground boost dodge should only cost half a charge, not a full one. It does not have as much utility or functionality as the actual jump when you just use it to boost along the ground horizontally. So why does it cost as much as the vertical above one that leads directly into a ground slam that has the force of a grenade? Doesn't make sense. Again, I think many of y'all will truly start enjoying Assault around level 15 or so once you've gotten your weapons leveled up a bit, but there's no question the jump pack functionality needs some buffs and loving, and the weapons take a while to get going and really hit in the way you would hope they would. They do get there. They are awesome at higher levels, but they aren't there initially, and that does not feel great. And finally, the parry system needs help in PvP. Right now, to the best of my knowledge, in Eternal War, parrying confers zero benefit other than to prevent damage to yourself and to stall enemies long enough for a teammate to hopefully deal with the situation, which doesn't sound too bad, right? I mean, they can just come over and shoot him in the face, but here's the thing. Space Marine 2 does not need a four honor art of battle system, a complex block and parry system in PVP. But I've had too many situations where someone has a slight HP lead on me with like the commando knife, spams 10 attacks in a row, I block and parry every single one of them and it never becomes my turn to swing. I don't want a melee system where everyone's perfect parrying all the time and you're always stunning each other and melee just becomes this wash where it's super easy to defend someone else and you never get to do, do any damage that way. That wouldn't be good either. So tighten the perfect parry window if you need to, make it hard to pull off, but a perfectly timed parry needs to give you frame advantage or provide some kind of mini stun or knockback effect on the enemy that makes it your turn to start your offense. Every melee system in any fighting game in history, if you parry or block certain moves, you get frame advantage. So if they're mashing buttons, you still get to attack first. Far as I can tell, that is not how it works right now. All parrying does is stall, and it leads to some pretty dumb situations where you outskill opponent in a 1v1, but you still can't win because they started swinging first, and that's not how that should work. But that's all I've got for you guys right now. I really think Space Marine 2 is an amazing game. I think the devs did a great job with it. I'm gonna be here a long time, and hopefully if it gets good support, covering it for a long time. But it absolutely does need some balance and feature changes to get where I'd like it to be. And these need to be the focus for right now before we start worrying too heavily about Terminator classes for PVE, or librarians and apothecaries, or lightning claws and story expansions. There are a ton of weapons, ton of cosmetics, ton of things I want to see. But right now there are core gameplay issues and server problems and all that that need to get fixed. And do remember, lethal difficulty is coming soon as well. So even if they only buff stuff in the coming weeks, there is still a good chance the next challenge will give operations players something new and scary to sink your teeth into. 
Let me know what y'all think, and I'll see you all in the next video. Any pride, signing out for now. Have a good one, guys. Thunderhawk arriving at evac point. Wrap down and ready. Extraction complete.